Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We have a Bachelor Nation Love is Blind crossover. It's a story we've been covering for several weeks now, a story in which I have said this is the biggest story of 2023. A spring awakening, if you will. And we're going to see what side everybody stands on after this discussion. Nick Thompson, a war of the Knicks. Nick Thompson is arguing against Nick Vial, although Nick Vial has essentially exited the argument. He hasn't commented after his initial doubling down that workers, or I should say people that go on reality TV, aren't considered workers. And Nick Thompson argues they should be considered workers because they're being exploited right now. And he actually reveals in the reel I'm going to share with you the most basic and obvious way way that we can look at the exploitation that is happening. Now, sometimes we're too close to the subject matter that it's hard to actually paint the picture. It's almost looking at like a Monet. If you're too close to a Monet, you're like, this is just a bunch of smudges of colors, but you look away and you can see the beauty of the artwork. Now, we're looking at the beauty in the sad sort of portrayal of what the hell is going down with the exploitation that happens in this specific industry. Of course, it happens. It's happening all over the world in different ways. And Nick Vial's argument against maybe um, progressing towards better rules uh, for reality TV contestants is that there are war more um, egregious uh, things happening on other parts of the world. Now, look, if we had a chi child labor uh, issue, and there is, a, you know, the randomly bust companies, and, and we have a system that is there to prosecute to the fullest extent of the law those claims, but if we have a large issue in our country, we can change it with grassroots effort, with exposing uh, what's going on here, and there is a writer's strike happening, the Writers Guild of America. So this all ties in together. I'm going to share with you right now what Nick Thompson has to say about the writer's strike. It's on day two right now. And I'm and I'm a pro-union guy. I've got my SAG card right here. This is my union card. I've been a member since 2008, Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Here we are. Now, YouTube doesn't fall under this contract, so I don't get to, I'm not working for the union right now. But if I was to work on a uh, TV or movie, I would be protected with a legal team making sure I am not exploited and I think that is fair to ask for the other people working in TV. Here's what Nick Thompson has to say. The Writers Guild of America or the WGA went on strike. Well why does this matter? History shows us that when the WGA goes on strike there's an increase in reality TV production. I'm wondering why? It's because while crew members all have unions or mostly have unions, the cast of reality shows are unrepresented and therefore can work mass amounts of hours for far significantly less wages. This all combined makes reality TV much cheaper and easier to produce, especially during a strike. In my experience in Love is Blind, the only time we got a break was for an hour or so, while the union day of the crew ended and they swapped out for a brand new crew because they had maxed out their hours for the day. Considering what we're all coming forward with about the porn and humane practices on reality TV cast members, this is only going to exacerbate that problem. More exploitation of human beings for big production companies' profits. Sad. Now, we know um, uh, you might say, well, on Dancing with the Stars, uh, you're not an employee if you're a dancer. What is that? The dancers get paid? Oh, the dancers on Dancing with the Stars are part of sag After because they're dancers and they're performers and they, they're covered in the sag After. Oh, but the celebrities that go on Dancing with the Stars, they're just celebrities. They're not employee. What's that? The celebrities on Dancing with the Stars get paid? A lot of money. Wow. Way above the actual union rates. Okay, so the issue here that we see is shocking the way Nick Thompson just put it. Now I'm going to slow and I'm going to slow this down for everybody. What he's saying is they work so many hours during the day that Love is Blind and I'm sure Bachelor does this too as separate producers has separate sound guys, has separate um, production assistants, has separate union members that oh, production assistants aren't in a union, but they really should be. Um, but but in this case, they are working so many hours that they tap out at the 10 to 12 hour mark and they swap them in like it's a hockey game. And that is true. So in Screen Actors Guild, I get paid a base rate for eight hours. At the eight to 10 hour mark, I get paid time and a half. At the 10 to 12 hour mark, I get paid double time. Now here's where it gets kind of crazy. If you work me 16 hours in a day, I get paid one day's rate every single hour after that. So if I work 20 hours, I'm getting paid a full day's rate to eight hours, a time and a half till 10, double time all the way to 16, and then a full day rate from 16 to 24. It is a wild amount 
amount of money and they don't want to pay that. So what they do is they'll bring in different shifts of people, which is normal. In a normal job, you'll have first shift, second shift, third shift, and um, you'll, you know, shift work, right? Uh, we all know shift work. But here we have the uh, contestants getting paid, you know, $1,000 for the week, but that breaks down to $7 an hour. So are we paying them as employees or are we not? If it's just a meal stipend to be a part of experiment, then there still should be collective bargaining to get that rate raised. If we are paying them as employees, then, then there are huge labor violation laws. Now, in one of the lawsuits that's existing out there, they're claiming that the, uh, 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 that the production company, Kinetic, uh, actually filed W-2s on their behalf. So if Kinetic thinks that they're employees and the IRS thinks that they're employees, what the hell are we even arguing about? And I and I think this is respectfully why Nick ha Vial hasn't continued this conversation because even his own producers are pushing back. Here's his producer, Amanda. I already shared this, but it's telling. Here's his producer, Amanda, pushing back. And, and trust me, Nick Vile, you need people like her in your life. It makes your show way more interesting to have a different opinion. About what do you mean? how in the industry, like w when there's pr like specifically in the entertainment industry, like I feel like something people talk about all the time is like, oh, people treat their assistants really badly and then the assistants become the agents and then those agents treat their assistant and it sure. becomes this like cycle. And so I, I That's guess- That's a job though. This isn't a job. Even though even though some of these people want it to be thought of as a job. Now I know it was a short-lived experiment, but Nick was on Dancing with the Stars. He did get paid to be on that reality show. So which reality shows are jobs and which reality shows aren't jobs? Are we really able to make the sort of, um, I don't know, the judgment over which is which? Or should we just have a collective agreement, maybe a union, maybe a collective agreement that there'll be certain pay rates happening. Is it too much to ask for $20 an hour for while people are being filmed? Is that too much to ask? Okay, so here's so here's where we disagree. Nick says right, this so is then, so then uh, we we got so we I just wanted to share with you what Nick's opinion was here that it is not a job. So we've already covered this in several different videos, but this is a new clues corner brought to you by Game of Roses Pod, who does a really good job of fighting against the powers that be, which is essentially the producers and the people that are in charge of of the exploitation that happens. Common sense, Amanda. So they shut out Amanda specifically here. She's the producer on the right for her common sense in the argument. Have a listen. It's fantastic. Really valid point. And the, especially when it comes to drinking, like I would say that there's a really clear distinction between like putting people in an environment where, you know, they're stressed, like it's a reality TV show. They might be getting married soon and having an open bar. Like, I'm not saying that's not fair game, but like the not having access to water thing. Is it like I just think there's two different conversations here. And well, I totally prove to me there was no access to water and then we can have a good discussion. So. So I just paused well, here. So Nick, Nick, and, and it's and it is it is very much like a pro prove to me. So he's asking for proof that these sort of complaints existed. And I would say this: if anyone had brought a complaint to Nick previously, you would consider that not exactly hard evidence. Does he want a smoking gun? Does he want someone saying, hey, we're going to hold back water from you? Or can we just rely on contestants' stories saying this had happened? And you would think if people had brought this up to Nick in the past that he might also argue, okay, it sounds like there's a problem happening. Oh, wait, what happened two years ago? Reality Steve brought this up to Nick. Really is what goes on in that show. I think then it just turns into this is a case by case scenario because what you dealt with has been, like you said, that was your experience. But when I've had people specifically tell me I wasn't allowed to eat, I wasn't allowed to go to bed until I gave a producer a line that they told me to say, eh. it does happen. That's all I'm telling. So his response was, eh. I'm telling you to acknowledge it does happen on the show. They will tell people you cannot go to bed until you say this line. Okay. So the response to that would be, did anyone hold a gun to your head? Well, that's not how it works. You know, you're sometimes they might have your passport or your license or they might have your cell phone they, and then they you you forget that you have autonomy. And this is how it works in cults. Like in most cults, no one forces you to stay within the walls. It's psychological commitment that they that they sort of pull out from you. And Nick was on the show years ago, really, when it was a different guard and maybe things have changed since then. I'll give him that benefit that he didn't experience this firsthand, but this is one of those issues where you can't can't be so dismissive. If something didn't happen to you, you think that it hasn't happened to others. 
they're trying to, I feel, feel like that's why they're suing, but they can't even be heard because everyone's like, oh, the real, entitled Ooh. reality TV stars. Nice. Yeah, Amanda Lifford coming the with the guns. Yeah. I love it. And so, yeah, yeah. So we have Chad here cheering on Amanda. I'm cheering on Chad as Chad cheers on Amanda. And if anyone is friends with Amanda or knows her, send her this video and tell Amanda, because I've, re I've reached out to her, but I'm, I'm not surprised if she hasn't responded here, but I've reached out to her to say, good job. Keep, keep sharing your opinion. You're worth more. And I'm not, and I'm not saying this guys in any way for her to have any issue with her current job, but she's definitely worth a voice in this argument they have the gold fucking cups the, the whole time. the whole is season is people holding gold cups but what if and that's they're rose? not but they're not the producers aren't pouring rose into their cups yeah they're yes like, they are drink? and they're like water or rose <laughs> there's literally a fucking shot of 20 uh gold cups full of booze to start the, the party scene that they were talking about earlier. And the other reason why they use these gold ch chalices is that you can't see uh, what they've edited. So it's like, well, maybe they've mixed a conversation around and you can't see how far down their drink is. It helps for their continuity issues. Sure. My kind of reaction to it is just, I feel like if Netflix did not give them water, that would be a huge legal liability that they would open themselves up to. Yeah, they're and, not dumb enough to like do something that stupid. And... It says in the contract they can do whatever they want. Take away your civil rights. There is no legal liability. That's what the contract says. They have no legal liability for any of the fucking miseries they're going to visit upon people. Now, my, my guess is this, that there isn't some uh, nefarious producer who says, starve them. Uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, But I do believe if they've got a production assistant or someone who's in charge of them, the last priority is their basic needs. They're in charge of other people. They're more worried about getting the producer's lunch orders taken than they are about getting water for these contestants and people have argued well they've got sinks they can just drink out of the tap and other and then others have said well those those sets that they're operating on don't have plumbing they're they're in the middle of a giant factory it's like an ikea showroom so yes they might have some water no one's dying of thirst the issue isn't whether or not they're going to live or die the issue is are they being exploited with a lack of sleep, with a lack of basic needs and lack of normal things that give you your humanity? And is that what is causing all the drama on the show? That's the issue. So I don't want to get too far away from the issue. No one's dying of thirst here. That's not the problem. It's basic rights. Breaks every couple hours. Um, uh, a pay that, that is uh, commensurate with a normal a livable salary. You know, it, we have to remember, and, and again, unions are a very popular thing, but there are union busting tactics going on everywhere out there. We know Starbucks just got their first union, which was a big deal and a scary deal for Starbucks. You're allowed to start a union, but uh, corporations will do anything they can to stop you. So th this one guy was trying to start a union, um, and uh, there's so many stories like this. He was trying to start a Starbucks union, and then someone from HR called him up and started questioning them about were they eating any of the food. And of course, when the food's done at the end of the night, they bring it to the back, and before it expires, they'll give it to the homeless people uh, or shelters or things like that. That. And they got one guy to admit that he uh, ate like a biscuit or something when he was leaving work. Who doesn't eat a biscuit from work? Now, technically, are you allowed to? No, I guess you could be fired from that. But the point being, everyone who is trying to form a union, they just start putting this pressure on you and they start to really squeeze down. Even going so far as Starbucks has closed locations. And why do we use Starbucks as an example? We use Starbucks as an example because we all know what a cup of coffee looks like. We all know what a $7 latte looks like. Like, and we're not talking about uh, $100 an hour salary negotiations. We're talking about basic livable wages. People will comment on this video. Oh, Starbucks offers their employees health care or this or that. And Starbucks has done a good job of having that propaganda to show what they offer. But when the bosses, when the CEOs are making thousands of times more than their employees, are they thousands of times, um, uh, you know, more... Um, are they working that hard? Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Union busting is a field populated by bullies and built on deceit. A campaign against a union is an assault on individuals and a war on truth. As such, it is a war without honor. The only way to bust a union is to lie, distort, manipulate, threaten, and always, always attack. So anyway, we um, there's different tactics that are used, but it, the same thing is happening with Amazon and these big corporations where they know their profit is made off of the backs of the workers who are 
are working barely above minimum wage in a minimum wage that hasn't changed in decades. So uh, we need to think twice when we go, oh, oh, please give me a break. They asked for it. They signed up for it, this or that, because that that really uh, is, is what the, the powers that be want us to think like. They want us to fight with each other here. Bounce off of that, like the stipend is nothing, but the reason it's, a, in my opinion, with no legal advice, the reason it's a stipend and not a wage, I feel like it would be bad optics to be like, we're firing you because you refuse to marry your coworker. Exactly. And they're or, protecting themselves. Or the whole like, are you doing this for money or are you doing this for love? You know, there's a reason why they're not. No, no, no. So Nick, uh, the producer here actually has a better argument, which is if you make them an employee, then how can an employee actually get married and all these things? That's a separate stipulation. That's a separate HR issue than doing this for money or doing this. So what, what Nick's argument here is um, if you're if they pay them, then people will wonder if they're doing it for money. And the problem, the problem becomes the only way that people can recoup their money is to then become more of an influencer than they probably would have needed to be in the first place because they do lose a lot of money by going on the shows they lose their job they spend a lot of money on wardrobe and all these other things not paid because it actually takes away from the integrity I of the show give a minimum wage like i'm not saying you need to so nick says it takes away from the integrity of the show <laughs> nick there is no integrity on the show okay and at this point including yours because we're just not getting to the truth of the argument here. Amanda's spitting facts, folks. Give them like They're that's not nuts. <laughs> Amanda, that's nuts. <laughs> it's not to pay people for their time. So Amanda's saying give them a minimum wage. Natalie's saying that's nuts. Honestly, at this point, I can't tell if Natalie's being sarcastic or I think she's being sarcastic. I think Natalie agrees with her, but I honestly don't know. Well, like think about that. I totally. And I think that's a really valid point. And the, especially when it comes. So, so then we, we, we cut it off there. I don't know, folks. I don't know. You tell me. Interest in unionization has risen around the country in the last few years. One in 10 workers in the U.S. is a member of a union. The number of unionized workers grew approximately 200,000 in 2022. Listen, most people you talk to in a union, they love the fact that they've got a legal team and collective bargaining to take care of them and the fact that they can't get fired. Is there exp exploitation in the world of unions? Yes, it exists. Absolutely. Is there exploitation for people that aren't in unions? Absolutely, that exists too. The Writers Guild is out there picketing right now, fighting for uh, their futures and for their families. And it's really going to come down to what side are people on. I really wish the Knicks could have this conversation. I really do. My guess is, and, and I could be wrong, Nick Vial, my guess is he he's on the wrong side of this issue and he's not going to discuss it any farther. We'll have to see how it all plays out. Let me know. I'm going to be going live on Patreon at the 10 a.m. hour if you want to join me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Um, I've got some behind-the-scenes content, uh, a lot of new stuff for you. I'm also going to be sharing the final 20 minutes of my conversation with Susie Evans that I never aired for you. When, when we hit cut, I let, the, I let the GoPro keep rolling. I'm going to share that with Patreon uh, later on today or tomorrow, so if you want that, go over there. And also, the afternoon podcast has just been crushing it. Bachelor Rush Hour every afternoon. Go over there to check out our content. Content. We'll be back with more content right after this.